Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Uh, the theme this year is Thy Kingdom Come. Now, uh, the point of that, I believe, is that we need to recognize God as our King. And in, in our life today, uh, we need to be living so that we'll be a blessing to His kingdom. We represent Him. And that, that's what we're looking at this, this morning. Uh, the King's purpose for His people, at least some of it. It's probably not all of it. But Matthew chapter 5, let me start reading in verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We'll just stop reading there. God calls us here salt and light. Christians, salt and light. And the point here is that we live in a corrupt world. I don't know if you, you doubt that. If you, if you watch the news at all, uh, man, it, it's, you almost have to be careful nowadays to let your children watch the news, don't you? Because there's just such vile things going on. And, and of course, news people think like, feel like they've got to report it. Uh, we live in a corrupt world. We live in a dark world. And God has said we need to be the salt and light that the world needs. We represent the king. Now, th that's the presupposition of his statement here. This, the world is decayed and dark. Now, he doesn't spend a lot of time uh, defining or making that statement. He just he expects you to understand this is a dark, decayed world that we're living in. Uh, the Bible tells us, for instance, we're all born sinners. Uh, David's comment under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Psalm 51 was, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh, we're all born sinners. Uh, that's just, just the way it is. Uh, but you know, a Christian has been changed by the power of God. Uh, there's a difference when you've trusted Christ as your Savior. Uh, in Ephesians, he says, You hath he quickened who were, who were dead in trespasses and sins. That was us before. Uh, we were dead in trespasses and sins. The word quickened means made alive. Christians are people who've been made alive spiritually. And God has, has made us salt and light. That's God's plan. Jesus in his, his sermon there, verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Now, now we know ultimately everything is in him. Any light we have, it comes from him. Uh, any salt we have comes from him. But it's interesting, if, if you think about salt, salt is really common, isn't it? You know, we, we have it at the table, we use it very commonly. Uh, in, in their day, salt was a very important commodity. Did you know that at one point Roman... Roman soldiers were paid with salt. Have you ever heard the expression, oh, that person is worth their salt? It's exactly where it comes from. Uh, the word salary. Some of you might have a salary, I hope. <laughs> the word salary comes from the word salt. You look it up. I did. Uh, it, it was a very important thing, salt. Um, what does it do? Well, one of the things he talks about here is it flavors. You put too much salt on something, you'll know it, won't you? Uh, there's a lot of flavor in salt. Salt is in the food, but it's distinct from the food. And that's what we are as, as Christians. One of the oldest books in the Bible is the book of Job. And he says there, Canst that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? <laughs> as, as far back as Job, he said, man, some, sometimes you just need some good salt on your, your food. You know, you'll, you'll be eating and somebody say, you got any salt? Okay, yeah, off you go. Oh. You need to be careful, though, because you don't want to, eat, you don't want to put salt on it until you've tasted it, uh, because there might be salt there already. Uh, in, the, in Israel, the Dead Sea is also called the Salt Sea. And in those days, people would have easily understood Jesus' illustration here, because in those days, you didn't buy a bag of salt and put it in a salt shaker. You had a bowl with natural salt. Have you ever seen salt, like at the Dead Sea? It, it grows in a big lump grows, you know, whatever crystals do, it crystallizes in a big lump. 
And they would take a big lump of that salt and they'd put it in a bowl. Well, on that lump, there'd be some dirt. There might be some seaweed. Who knows what, <laughs> what might have been there. Uh, you know, and in that bowl, then you'd, you'd pick off a lump of salt. You'd get rid of the dirt and the gunk. And eventually, you'd end up with just all the leftover. All the dirt and all the stuff that not, that's not salt. That's exactly what Jesus was talking about. He said, if you go to the salt bowl and all that's left is the junk, he said, there's no salt in there. That's all been picked out. And all that that's good for is you, you throw it out on the street. Yeah, it might kill some weeds or something. It might make some weeds. And then you put another chunk of salt in there. And that's what Jesus, that's the illustration that he was, he was using. And, and he's saying in our lives, we're the salt of the earth. He said, if, if all we are is junk, we're not salt. And you need to apply that to your own life this morning. Are you salt or are you non-salt? I'll use that term. <laughs> Do you know Christ as your Savior? Have you been made alive, quickened by the Spirit of God? Salt flavors. Salt also cleanses. Now, we don't use it that much for that in these days, but in the old days, it was, it was often used as an antiseptic. There's an interesting verse in, in Ezekiel. I'll just read it to you. He's talking about a baby that wasn't being treated right. It was a picture of Israel. He says, None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, uh, to have compassion on thee. He says, The day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither wast thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. When the baby was born, of course, you, you cut the umbilical cord, and you wash it, and they would salt the baby. And that was to clean it, to, to keep it from any, uh, any sickness and, and disease. Uh, babies used to be salted. Now, I don't think they do that in the hospitals anymore. <laughs> they, they probably have a, a, another way they do that. But you know, our lives should make the lives of those around us cleaner, not dirtier. Salt is a, it's a cleaner. It's, a, it's an antiseptic. Have you ever had an antiseptic put on a, a wound? Man, that can really sting, can't it? And your life sometimes will sting people. Yeah, you know, they're, they're hurting. They're, they're cut and wounded. And, and you come along, and, and, and the joy of the Lord is in your heart, and, and you're representing Jesus, and they say, oh, that hurts. I don't like that. Listen, when, when people are living in sin, and, and you talk about you know, God's standards and so on, in our day and age, you know, it's uh, things like marriage and language and liquor and you know, all kinds of things. Uh, when you live for the Lord, they'll say, ooh, I don't like that. Uh, th there's a verse in 2 Corinthians that says pretty much that. Let me just read it to you, 2 Corinthians 2. He says, um, We are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. Same thing, but a different reception. You know, some people, you, you slap that antiseptic on, they say, oh, thank you. That's been hurting. I needed that. Others, you put it on and say, what are you doing? <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> you know, it hurts. And as Christians, we need to understand that. Some will rejoice with us. You know, you live your Christian life boldly and, and, and enthusiastically, and, and, and they'll, they'll say, great, you know, good to see somebody who loves the Lord. Others will resent us. But listen, you can't decide how they'll respond. You just be salt. You don't get to decide how they're going to respond. Just be what God has called you to be. Uh, living and saying God's standards can, can really sting when people are not living for the Lord. In Colossians, uh, he puts it this way. Let me just find that. Colossians 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. <clears throat> we ought to be saying and doing the things that God would, would have us to do. We need to be that salt uh, that the world needs. Uh, let me ask you, what's your influence? Are you being the, the salt that those around you need? Salt flavors. Salt cleanses. Salt also preserves. Now, we live in a day of massive refrigeration. <laughs> you, know, you go to these shopping centers. They have these you know, refrigerators big as a bus out the back, you know, cool in that place. And we have refrigerators and all all kinds of things keeping food, but you know, before refrigeration, people dried things, people salted things. 
and uh, salt it was known and still is as a, as a preservative. It goes against corruption. It, it helps to stop uh, corruption. You know, in the, in the world, there's a lot of corruption. And, and as Christians, we're a blessing to our world in that we help to stop and slow the, the corruption. The world needs us, the world needs you to live for Christ. Your neighbors need you to live for Christ. Now, you know, as an antiseptic, they might say, oh, that stings, I don't like that. But they're going to get the benefit. They're going to get the benefit in, in general. Australia, in the past, had what they call a Judeo-Christian basis. Our laws, our standards, our ethics came from the Bible. Um, Australia divorced God when it changed marriage. And we're, we're seeing the results of Christianity being pushed out of the courthouse, pushed out of the schools. Talking to our, our, our children this morning in the class, uh, you know, Dola was talking about creation and uh, you know, how it's not the Big Bang. And a couple of the kids said, yeah, we, we have to do a report on that this week, the Big Bang. They have to be taught a lie. And God has to be kicked out. And no wonder our kids are, are, are committing suicide. Folks, our world needs us to be the preservative, uh, to be the representatives of the Lord. He says, ye are the salt of the earth. Another thing salt causes, you've probably experienced this, salt causes thirst. And, you know, our testimony can cause people to thirst for the Lord. If someone sees you enjoying your relationship with the Lord, sees you responding in difficulty uh, with hope, they'll think, oh, I need that. I, I need their God. I need what they're, what they're doing. We just need to live for Jesus. We just need to be the salt that God has made us. We don't need to be ashamed of it. We need to live the fruit of the Spirit. You ever think about it? The fruit of the Spirit is what people are trying to get in the wrong way. Love, joy, peace. Man, especially those first three. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's what the world wants. But they're, all, they're going about it the wrong way. They need our Savior. They need us to be the salt of the earth. The other thing he talks about there is light. Now, I, I probably could have brought a whole sermon on, on each one of these, but now, there's a lot about light. But you know the basic of light is you just need to let it shine. <laughs> uh, you, you don't need, need to know how it works. You just click it on and, and away it goes. You know, in those days you, you, lit a, you lit a candle. It just needs to be able to shine. He said in verse 14, you're the light of the world. In verse 16, let your light so shine. And, and he says the, the problem is, uh, the thing we need to avoid is covering it up. So don't, don't put it under a bushel. Now, that's, a, that's a basket that they use to, to, to carry uh, their produce. He said, don't, don't put it underneath something. Put it on a candlestick. Let people see. You know, we don't need to be ashamed of, of the Lord. I was, I'm getting old, and sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and walk around and get the cramps out and, you know, whatever. And, uh, have, you ever, have you done that lately? In, in our homes, probably yours is the same as mine, there's lots of little lights. A little green one here and a little orange one there and a little blue one over there. And, and, you know, all together they make quite a, actually quite a bit of light. <laughs> Now, you know, at first you don't see it. Then you, as you get to look at it, you think, ooh, what's that? <laughs> All kinds of little lights. Now, can I say this? It's not a very satisfactory light. <laughs> and, and I'm afraid many times as Christians, we're kind of like those little, little monitor lights, you know, that we see in our homes. We need to be like the light that just, you know, flick on the switch and, and let her glow. You know, people need to see the Lord. We need to be a light uh, in, in a dark world. Let your light shine. Now, on a practical level, you know, we can sing all the songs, this little light of mine, you know, we can sing the song without doing what needs to be done. We need to do the practical things. And it's just, it's things like when they drink, don't drink. You know, live for the Lord. Be filled with the Spirit instead of the spirits. <laughs> when they cheat, don't cheat. Yeah, at work, there, there's times... These rugby clubs and, you know, businesses and things. People get caught up in what everybody else is doing, and pretty soon they're all ashamed. You know, as Christians, 
We can't be like that. We're, we're the light. And when they're doing those things, listen, all you have to do is not do what they're doing. Do what the Lord would have you to do. You'll, I'll tell you what, you'll stand out. The, the bushel basket will come off. And, and they'll say, oh, yeah, that guy, he's, he, he's shining. Have you ever had somebody shine a light in your eyes when it was dark? Oh, it, can, it can be pretty startling. And sometimes that's going to be you. You're going to startle people by just doing a normal Christian thing. When people visit on Sunday, go to church. Invite them. If they don't come, go anyway. Let them know that there's someone more important than them. Be a light. Uh, what we're talking about here is our, our influence. Uh, Jesus, when, when he was talking to his disciples and their relationship to the world, in John 17, it's when Jesus was, was praying. John 17, for instance, verse 6. He said, I've manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. He's talking to his heavenly Father. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Their influence. God had given him these disciples. He said, you gave, me, you gave them to me out of the world. They came out of the world, and, and they have decided to follow your word. Yeah, that's what a disciple is, isn't it? Our, our influence, what, what we're going to be influenced by. Later in verse 11, he said, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. At the end of the verse, he says, uh, That they may be one as, as we are one. Yeah, as Christians, we're still in the world, and we're to, we're to be lights in, the, in this world. Verse 14, I've given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. I was just reading it, just a title of a message uh, by Martin Luther, and he was against the monastic life. Uh, the monastic life was where, where people left the world and just went and and supposedly live for the Lord in some obscure place. Listen, that's not what God calls us to. God doesn't call us to leave the world. God calls us to be a light in the world. Verse 15 of John 17, he says, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from the evil. They're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Our influence. We need to be influenced by the Lord. And then we need to just be salt and light. The problem is, if we're not pure, the effect is lost. Um, we've all known someone who says they're a Christian and lives like the devil. And what a terrible testimony. For, for us right now, uh, there's a religion that uh, has been so corrupt for centuries and, and it's coming out now. And you know, for, for your friends, they're going to say, they're going to think that's the same as what we believe. You need to let them know. Uh, we're not Catholics. We never have been. Baptists never were Catholic. We didn't come out of the Catholic Church. Now, there's always been people that have followed the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that you, you attack them or anything, but you need to understand that the world looks at that stuff and they say, oh, yeah, you Christians. Well, listen, Christianity has very little to do with um, most religion. Now, our, our influence, being light, being salt, uh, we're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're to be salt and light. And if we're not pure... Listen, we're not going to retard that corruption without purity ourselves. We have to be unlike what we're in. Salt is unlike the food. You, know, you don't just sit down to a meal of salt. You, you add a little bit to, to your food. Salt added to the food, different than the food. Light is different than darkness. I, I was trying to think how to say this, but you, know, you, ne you never have a flash dark. <laughs> All right? We have a flash light. Uh, dark is just... The absence of light. And as Christians, God has called us to be light. We need to be different than the world around us. Earlier, I read to you Colossians, uh, from Colossians 4, the verse right before that, he says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Our walk, how we live. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Our speech, how, how, what we say. Everything about us, salt and light. Now, we need to be different, and, and the reason we need to be different is so that we can show the world the love of the Lord. Uh, we've seen 
uh, Sunday night, several verses from, from Peter. Uh, one, 1 Peter 2, 9, where he says, You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has, right, when you get saved, God makes you a part of something greater than yourself, him, himself. He makes us part of himself. And our purpose is to be salt and light. He is to be the king. Thy kingdom come. And our lives need to, to reflect that. Uh, that's our purpose. Our purpose is the glory of God. That's what he says there in Matthew 5. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Uh, you know, salt, uh, maybe it speaks of our inward character. Uh, light speaks of our outward testimony. You know, what we are in, inwardly and outwardly, both are to glorify God. Living and exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. We don't want to be like that junk that's left over, just thrown out. You know, as Christians, we, if you're a Christian, you are salt. I don't know if you noticed there, he, that's the exact expression he, he uses. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. If you're saved, you are salt and light. But if you're not saved, listen, when all the salt's picked out, are, are you going to be the stuff left over? Do you know Christ is, as your Savior? Now, God has a purpose in our lives as Christians. In uh, Philippians chapter 2 and, and, and verse 15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. See, we live in a crooked and perverse nation. We're to be lights. We're to be like Jesus. Now, I was thinking about it this week. I don't think anybody is going to come to the end of their life and think, boy, I wish I'd have made more money. But as Christians, we will wish we'd given him more. We'll wish we'd done more for the Lord. We'll wish that we'd influenced our family more for the Lord. Read our Bible more. Understood His Word more. Uh, lived the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we'll wish we'd have given Him more. Like He says there, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, uh, which is in heaven. Now, the Bible tells us we manifest the truth. We're to be that salt and light. Uh, we retard corruption. Listen, we shouldn't be a part of the corruption. We should uh, stand against it. We're unlike the world. You know, we're different. Salt is different than the food. We're unlike the world. And, and let me say this. Uh, sometimes you'll get tired of being different. It, it, just sometimes you'll think, oh, man. It, you know, it just seems like every time you turn around, there's something where because you're a Christian, you're different. You don't fit in. Well, if you're tired of being different, spend more time with Jesus. You won't be different than him. You see, you're salt and light because that's who he is. Uh, spend time with other faithful Christians in, in your local church. Listen, be a part of a church. We gather together because we do sometimes. We get tired of being different. So we band together and say, oh, praise the Lord. Here's another Christian. You ever, you ever had that happen when you're traveling? You just finally you meet somebody who's a Christian and it's such a relief. And what a blessing it is. Well, God gives you that opportunity three times a week. You should be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Hopefully you won't be different. You know, our different, uh, in the Old Testament, when a person was a leper, leprosy was a terrible disease, one of the things they had to do was say, they had to let people know that they were different. Unclean, they had to call out. You know, people came around, unclean, don't come near, I'm, uh, unclean. Listen, we're not different like that, all right? Uh, we don't have to tell people, I'm a Christian, came away, I'm a Christian. <laughs> we're different, I, was, I think this is a good illustration. You know when the Olympics comes, they get all excited about what uniform the team is going to wear. Oh, this week they're going to show us the, the new uniform. Well, listen, that's, how, that's the way we're different. God is going to give us a robe of white. God is going to expose us for what we are. You know, there, there's coming a time when, when faith will not only uh, 
be something that's in the distance, it'll be present tense. It'll be now. It'll be here. We'll be able to touch it. And, uh, you know, as Christians, we're different in that we're going to be wearing the uniform. Now, that new uniform that's, that's for God's team, hey, that's going to be us. And what a blessing. That, uh, there'll be no shame there. Uh, they'll just be blessing. Now, we don't, we don't use that as our attitude towards people, I'm, I'm better than you are kind of thing. Uh, what, we, what we do is we see, you're right where I was. I was dead in trespasses and sin. But I trust Christ and he quickened me. He made me alive. The same is available for you. We need to be that salt and light that the world needs. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this morning. Make it personal. Is your life committed to this prayer, thy kingdom come? Is that your attitude? Do you want what God wants for your life, for your family, for your country? Is your life pure and representing Jesus Christ? If you died today, are you saved? Do you know for sure, based upon God's word, that, that you'd go to heaven? In this same message that Jesus was giving in Matthew 5, Matthew 7, verse 13, toward the end, this is his coming to the invitation, he said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Now the word straight means restricted. You've heard of the narrow way? That's what he's talking about. Enter in at the straight gate. He said, most people are, are going in the, the, the broad way, the wide gate. And he said that, he says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. But the, the broad way leads to destruction. Folks, we need to choose the narrow way. We need to choose the Jesus way. Don't be deceived. Jesus is the only way. There's no religion that can get you to heaven. There's no ceremony that can get you to heaven. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he rose again. <laughs> what a blessing. We have a living Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when you have life in Christ, he says, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Don't cover it up. Just let it shine. Let the world see Jesus in you. Trust Jesus. Live for Jesus. This morning I thought we'd uh, close with the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It's page 160 in your, your hymnal there. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And you know, if, if you're not saved this morning, when you look at Jesus, you'll feel guilty. And that's a good thing. Because we are all guilty before God. You know, as you get closer to the light, you'll, you'll, you'll think, oh, this is, this is hard. But the Lord can save your soul. The Lord can forgive your sins if you'll just ask Him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And He'll give you new eyes. He'll give you a new life. He'll make you the salt and the light that, that He wants you to be. Now, Asriel, come and lead us in this, this song. Let's sing it. Uh, maybe you need to come and pray. Uh, maybe you need to... Uh, do something to be right with the Lord. Uh, trust Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're saved and you need to be scripturally baptized. Uh, I'll, I'll be down here if you, if you have a, a need. Listen, you come. Uh, let's, let's deal with it this morning. Let's stand together and sing.